Hello YouTube, it's Das Gregor, and welcome back to another Linux distro review. Today's distro was requested by a new subscriber who wanted to look at Linux Mint Debian Edition, specifically with KDE. Now, before I get a lot of people saying, hey, LMDE doesn't come with KDE, you're absolutely correct. LMDE comes with Mate or Cinnamon as the desktop environment. However, that shouldn't stop anybody from getting the distribution or desktop that they want. So what I did was I installed Linux Mint Debian Edition and used the Mate flavor. Looked online for some resources as to, okay, how do I get the full-blown KDE experience and I found it was quite simple. All you have to do is within Mate or Cinnamon once you have your network running open up a web browser within or not a web browser I'm sorry a console and then inside of your console type in sudo for super user do apt-get install KDE dash full and what that will do is download a lot of megs of KDE applications and then install KDE after you're done with that if you reboot before you log in you should be able to change your session from the default mate or cinnamon whichever you chose and choose the KDE desktop environment and it will log in to a default KDE. That's all there is to it except for one thing. When I did that I ran into some networking hiccups. If I was to log into Mate I would get the network manager as you see here and it would allow me to connect right to the wireless network here at my home. However after rebooting and going into Mint Debian with KDE, the scripts were missing for the network manager and it would not connect to my internet. I could not get the wireless to see anything, but that is not a showstopper. If you just remember that when you are in KDE, or not KDE, I'm sorry, when you're in the Mate Edition, if you go into Synaptic Package Manager and what you want to do here is look for the network option for Plasma and hopefully I can find that without too much trouble I believe, yes here it is Plasma Widget Network Manager and I believe there was something else that when I clicked on that it installed also the script for network in the KDE and once I did that of course I was able to reboot set up and use the uh, widgets to add that down there to the bar go into it and then configure it to go ahead and and connect to the network that was the only hiccup that I ran into utilizing Debian Edition Mint Flavor this week. You know, there's really nothing too exciting about it. Since Mint doesn't make a KDE f flavor, there are not any wallpaper or anything that really makes it stand out and say, hey, I'm a Mint flavored Debian Edition with KDE. It's just pretty much bare bones what you expect to see with vanilla KDE. Therefore, I kind of threw what I felt like throwing onto the desktop. And as you can see, I threw a little weather widget on there, my CPU processing, the moon phase, because I'm always interested. When the crazies come out at the full moon, I'll know it because I can see my moon. <laughs> RSS now for some of my feeds that I enjoy watching. Of course, my docky bar, 
which I always enjoy having it work. For the most part, everything seems to run proper. I did run into some issues with Synaptics here, and I ended up, when I was trying to set up a few extra codecs, because I was tr doing uh, my screen capture using a WebM uh, video codec, it was failing, so I switched back over to MP4, and I went into here to see if I could set that up and it was not working correctly and I went into the repositories and I ended up having to disable debian.linuxmint.com slash latest latest security latest multimedia the reasoning is for that is it appears that that site is down right now and that is causing some problems with doing updates it's causing some problems with a lot of different things so if you find that when you're doing an update and it's just sitting there and then it finally fails with a whole bunch of stuff go in here and pay attention because I noticed that it was saying testing was failing and these were the only ones that were going towards the testing so I disabled them redid it and it worked just fine all you're going to get with these two of course are your stable packages and nothing more but that's okay everything still runs very well now as I said this is vanilla KDE. It did come with all the plasma type add-ons, which is something within Gen 2 I normally have to install manually. Therefore, I was able then to put Lancelot on here, and I really do like Lancelot a lot. It uh, just gives a little bit better flair, I think, than the standard KDE kicker. I did find some other issues when I started customizing my look and feel. When I go into system settings, for instance, and bring this up, you know, right now it's it's pretty much okay. But if we go into application appearances here, I am using for my colors Obsidian Coast. But I noticed when I use Zion Reversed, which is actually what I really like to use, within the Debian Edition Mint KDE, it makes things very difficult to see. For instance, if I were to apply that, and I do like the look, a lot of times these things will start to disappear. There'll be some uh, white on white for certain windows. Let me see if I can kind of show. Like right here, you can't see anything at all with the preview frame rate in there until, of course, you hit these buttons and there were some other th options that I was noticing I could not read them at all if I for instance unlock my widgets and say go, I go to this RSS feed and I go to the configuration you see how all of these windows are white you can't see anything that is due to a bug or a problem with the feature or the, the, the color scheme inside of Linux Mint Debian and I think that might be actually a KDE flaw however in my Gen 2 I don't have this problem at all everything is proper and looks good you can see here it's very difficult you can't see what the headers are here until you click on them and then you can see them because for some reason it's it's doing a white on white and that's unfortunate because I do really like that theme once you go into there and change that back though for your colors to something else and then that will fix it and you don't have that problem but it can be a small issue other than that of course I know Caddy will say that KDE blows up on him every once in a while there's a lot of KDE haters out there I've been using KDE since the 2.x days years and years for more than a decade I'm familiar with KDE I like KDE and I prefer a system with KDE I do admit I switched over to GNOME back when KDE 4.0 came out in fact the first time Gen 2 made KDE 4.0 stable I upgraded from I think 3.5 or 3.6 whatever the last version of the 3.x series was and it was a long time ago 
and it completely blew up my system. Hosed everything with KDE. I, I pretty much decided, you know, I haven't rebuilt Gen 2 for a while. I'll rebuild it. I rebuilt everything from scratch, and it was still hosed. And what I realized was KDE 4.0 was not ready for stability, was not ready at all. And I started looking around for other desktop managers. And that's when I actually discovered again the uh, GNOME 2.x series, 2.6, I think it was then. And it was great, and I liked it. I liked it a lot. I was very impressed with it. I started using that as, as a new desktop environment. And then there was talk of 3.0 coming out and I thought alright well I really like the way to the 2.x series of GNOME is. I think I'm going to give this a shot. 3.0 came out and I thought oh my gracious absolute rubbish. Horrible, horrible, horrible. And that's when I discovered Mint for the first time. Now I thought about the fact that this series is 52 Linux distributions that were supposed to be unique and some of you might say Hey, I know you did Linux Mint KDE flavor a while back. And yes, I did. But that is the dreaded Ubuntu. And Ubuntu is not Debian. I don't care what people say. It's not Debian. And I don't really endorse Ubuntu too much anymore. I don't like the direction that they're going. And I feel that even though this is still considered Linux Mint, it's still based off of a completely different package source and brand with Debian. So therefore, I'm going to treat it as a unique distribution, whether or not you agree with me. <laughs> In the meantime, of course, I have been working on Linux from scratch on my other computer. As I mentioned in this last Wednesday's little Gen 2 review or ramble. I have been doing very well in Linux from scratch. I've spent probably three full days in my spare time here and there when you add up all the hours that I've been in there. And I've gotten Xorg completely working. I've gotten Fluxbox for now. I wanted a very simple window manager just to make sure things worked. I did test it with TWM. That worked. Fluxbox is working now. My next step is to attempt to get something like XFCE running in it. I have a working kernel, colors in my directories, everything else looking good, almost no errors at all, and also have my wireless running with WPA supplicant, so it is very good. But that is a different subject. I just wanted to explain why I decided also to do a very easy distribution like Linux Mint this week so I could focus a little bit more on Linux from scratch and not feel guilty. <laughs> anyway, looking at Linux Mint Debian, this is one of those distributions that I've always recommended for people. If you would have asked me four or five years ago, I would have pointed you to Ubuntu, but I really honestly do not like what Mark Shuttleworth is doing with the company, with the brand, and what he's doing to the community out there. It's just, I'm, I'm not happy at all with it. And so I refused, I hope, try to stick to my guns on that. Well, I don't want to support that any longer. So I'll be sticking with, you know, reviewing Debian-based distributions, uh, Slackware, Gen 2-based, all the others. And I'm going to do my best. I, I still may touch on the flavor. I'm not going to harp on a on a distribution if it's a real good distribution just because it's based off of Ubuntu. Uh, but what he's even doing to the to the to the, those minor distributions that are based off of Ubuntu is just absolutely wrong. And I disagree with it. I really, really would say to any of you developers that are developing against Ubuntu that you consider changing your flavor. Go to Debian if you want to stick with something that's similar, but really look at what Mark Shuttleworth is doing in the community, because I think most people are going to realize that it's not the right thing for what Linux stands for. That's my own two cents, my own opinion. Take it as you like it. 
This is Linux Mint Debian Edition, KDE flavor. Easy to set up, easy to change from Mate or Cinnamon if you're not a Mate or Cinnamon fan. But isn't that the great thing about Linux? You can choose. If you don't like one desktop environment and that's all they've given you to offer, there are ways to easily put a different desktop environment on there and go forward with what you're familiar and what you like the most. That is the great thing about the choice and freedom that Linux provides. So until next time, whether it's morning, evening, noon, or night, whatever you're having, I hope you enjoy this. Thanks for watching. Thanks for your support. We'll talk to you all later. Bye.